Alright, hi guys. Welcome back to my channel. So on this channel, we talk about all things natural hair, lifestyle content. We have challenges, we have tags, we do anything that I like to do, okay? So if that interests you, I hope you guys make the decision to subscribe if you would like after you watch this video. So as you guys read from the title, this video is going to be my top 10 tips. Top 10 tips, top 10 tips. Hey, top 10 tips, top 10 tips. Seriously, these are going to be my top 10 tips. <laughs> I can't even say that no more. <laughs> These are going to be my 10 tips when you are transitioning from relaxed hair. I guess I should say, yeah. From when you're lit. <laughs> should I be doing YouTube? Like, should I do this? So when you're transitioning from relaxed hair with my natural hair, I started, my last relaxer was like the beginning of 2015. You guys can click here. It's gonna come out of the top and you guys can go watch my natural hair journey video that I filmed like a long time ago, like back when I first started my channel. So there you guys can see the pictures, the progress up until now. Genetics are going to play a huge part in your hair growth, how fast it grows, how long it grows. If it's not in your family to have like super, 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 super long hair, if that's not common, then you could take that into account. Not saying that your hair isn't going to grow to that length. Genetics play a huge role and that goes without saying. So your hair is going to grow on its own. Hair grows about a half an inch a month on average. So where the problem lies when you aren't showing signs of growth is retaining length breakage all those things are incorporated into your hair growth you need to pay attention to those things as well and i'll do a separate video on how i've been retaining length and i'll insert a picture here of my hair in 2019 and then a picture here of my hair length now in 2020 i did have to trim my ends in 2019 when i graduated i did flat iron my hair and I got a trim and I'll insert that video here. I'll insert a video of my hair before the trim and then I think I have a video of it after. So I'll insert that here. But anyways, the point is I did have to trim off a good amount. If I didn't trim off those ends, it would have been longer. Like it would have been past like mid back as you guys saw from the video. But I'm all about health over length. Like if your hair is long, but you know, the ends you could see through, they're kind of frail that's not cute you want your hair to be healthy a nice blunt well it doesn't have to be blunt cut but just nice healthy looking ends you know you want your your full head to look just full of life and healthy you know you don't want to have long hair that's unhealthy that's not gonna look cute in the end whenever i find a single strand knot or i see a split end i'll cut it off right then i use my hair shears that i have and i'll just cut it wherever i see it um, i'm kind of been contemplating getting a diva cut but that's another story so now for the tips the tips are going to go from one being what i started doing right off the bat to 10 being things that i learned gradually over time so like i said i started transitioning in 2015 and it's now 2020 so well i feel like i was fully transitioned oh i can't remember i started transitioning in 2015 i feel like it took like good three years Let's say a good three years for my hair to have been without relaxer at all if i'm wrong i'll post it somewhere but i think it was a good three years so around 2017 is when i really started to see my curls kind of revive a little bit and i started being able to do other things with it because before it was just straight straight in so wasn't cute anytime i did any type of style it was like oh curly 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 texture and then straight ends it was so, it was so bad um it makes me cringe thinking about it you guys can learn more about all that in the hair journey video so let's get into the tips so the first one is to do your research and never stop never stop doing your research guys i started looking on youtube immediately i needed to see it with my own eyes i needed to see what kind of hair the girls had started to curate the people that i were subscribed to and really i was paying more attention to the people who had the same curl pattern as mine not everyone's hair is alike so you really need to pay attention to your hair as you're doing it you can't just get a product that somebody else has and use it and think it's going to be the same thing you have to really think about your hair in different stages but yes do your research make sure that you're reading articles and make sure that they're credible there's another youtuber that i really really like very credible and I believe that her name is The Green Beauty. 
I'm gonna link it. I'm gonna link her channel down below because she is awesome. She goes into the science of things and that's really what I like to see. And that's really how you know when somebody knows what they're talking about, when they can, you know, back it up with some facts. So for the next tip, I would say absolutely no heat. That's something that I started doing right off the bat, mostly because since I did decide to go natural, I was like, well, I'm not about to apply heat to this and flat iron it every time because for one, it's not gonna look the same like how it was when I got a relaxer. And for two, I don't feel like maintaining that. And I felt like every time I did flat iron my hair, I would get like breakage. My hair would break off after a while and I didn't like all the shedding I would experience and things like that. So I just stayed away from heat and I decided to do the one year no heat. After that one year, I said, let me do two years because I'm seeing progress. <laughs> I did two years no heat. And then I think after that second year, I think I flat ironed it on New Year's. I believe I did. Wait, no, did I? I forget, it's in the video, but I know that 2018, that new year I did flat iron my hair and 2019 I did as well because I graduated. So yeah, that started to become a thing, just not using heat throughout the whole year. And then at the end of the year, I get to flat iron my hair, kind of like a little treat. It's absolutely no heat. I would use a hooded dryer though. When I deep condition, I would use a hooded dryer. I would wear a plastic cap over my hair and then go under the hooded dryer. So those are fine. Even blow drying, like to get a blown out braid out or a blown out bantu knot or whatever. I never did those ever, <laughs> literally ever. And it's kind of hard, but you get used to it after a while. And it's really nothing new, especially if you're transitioning from relaxed hair to natural hair. So the next tip is to clarify your scalp. Every week, every other week, or co-wash, your hair grows from your scalp. So if your scalp is dirty, if two plus two is four. Two plus two is four. Right. And five plus five is 10. Okay. What I the fuck is this? But seriously, if it's not clean, it's not gonna grow effectively. It might grow, but it might not grow effectively. And if you're the type that you feel like cleansing your hair this often, like once a week is too much, then I wouldn't use as much product. Or if you feel like you're the type that your scalp still thrives and it still grows when your hair is, for example, braided up in a protective style and you might wear wigs often. I know that's a thing that some people are able to keep their hair just braided down and wear their wigs. And then, you know, when they it's time to take it off and they do cleanse their hair and deep condition it and do all that kind of stuff then their hair is okay and that's fine do what is good for you i feel like not one thing is going to work for everyone but for me i know that's something i started doing and i really just did it because i would have product build up so cleansing my hair every week and giving my hair that moisture again was helpful and i'm about to talk about deep conditioning but that's something that i would do weekly as well it was just easy to wash my hair deep condition style it in a protective style and go from there so the fourth thing is a consistent hair regimen always remember to take pictures i love taking pictures of multiple things if i am ready to kickstart my weight gain then i'll take pictures of that if i'm trying a new skin care product i'll take pictures of my skin i just love progress pictures and they're very helpful very encouraging as well they could also be discouraging if nothing happened but <laughs> for the most part at least you can see for yourself and you're not sitting there guessing but yes yeah, staying on a consistent regimen is something that i did all the time right off the bat i stayed on a consistent regimen once i learned about the loc process that's what i stuck with loc I think I did LCO sometimes too, but I think it was mostly LOC because that's what I was seeing a lot of. Like I said, do your research all the time, never stop. My hair regimen was extremely consistent. A lot of times people would ask me like, Jillian, you are always doing your hair. Like, <laughs> do you ever not do your hair? Like, dang, every time I see you, you're doing your hair. And really it's just because I washed it consistently. Like I had a routine set up, literally a weekly routine sundays i think was my wash day and i would deep condition on those days i would also deep condition on wednesdays because something about my hair it's dry if if my hair is anything it is dry so deep conditioning twice a week is a must for me and sometimes i'll even do three if it's that deep like if i just got a protective style taken out or something like that yes staying on that consistent regimen making one for yourself when you're starting to transition you can kind of get inspiration from other youtubers but 
always take into consideration how your hair feels, how it looks after you use these types of products and these methods. So the LOC method, the LCO method, just really try to figure out which one works for you because I know people say it's for low por porosity, some people say it's for high porosity, like just see if it works for you. I would try both ways. I tried both ways. My hair feels the same, acts the same both ways. Really note how your hair reacts to certain products and once you find your staple products nobody can tell you nothing okay come up with a consistent hair regimen and stick to that so the fifth tip is to not go too long without maintenance on your natural hair meaning that you want to make sure that you're moisturizing your natural hair daily and if not daily every other day i know like i said everyone's hair is different for my hair i can go a good day <laughs> maybe maybe two days maybe two days depending on what style I did or what products I used with this puff this was a twist out two days ago yesterday I had it in a puff and today it's in an even bigger puff than it was yesterday and all I did today I spritzed it with my water and aloe all over so it doesn't feel dry and I put my leave-in conditioner everywhere and I just brushed it up into this puff so yeah and i picked it out so maintenance is like that is what i mean and making sure you're not going too long in between your wash days without adding some type of moisture natural hair thrives thrives on moisture and it could be something as small as water it does not have to take up a good amount of your time just to you know spritz 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 add 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 a little scrunch a little here and go you especially want to do this when you're protective styling when i have any protective style in like my mini braids my mini twists cornrows anything i will spritz my hair every night and make sure that i do the same routine just with my hair in whatever style it's in but i do my same liquid oil cream however way i want to do it but i always make sure to add that